Hello Knockouts, Tanya TKO here, and I'm a self-love specialist and relationship expert from TanyaTKO.com. Today we're going to talk about Surviving R. Kelly Parts 1 and 2. I heard that this is a six-part series, so I believe that this is going to continue to go on because there are still questions that are unanswered, especially about the things that are happening nowadays. So Part 1 ended off around the time that R. Kelly got married and went up to about the time that he ended up um, that scandal with the young girl in 2001. All right. So, you know, I'm just going to say this outright. Please forgive me. I know that some of you don't like when my thoughts are all over the place. I did take down two pages of notes, but I don't know if I can do this topic justice. So I'm making this video because this is fresh on my mind, fresh on my heart and fresh on my spirit. And I want to do this now. We can have a conversation in the comments. I can come back out and make another video. But I wanted to make this one, but my head is like, it's spinning and swirling with so many different thoughts about so many different things. And so let's just, let's just go into it. My very first, my very first thought is that we failed these girls. We failed them. And we continue to fail young girls of color. And this is an ongoing perpetual problem where we, where we covet these, I don't want to say stars, but we covet these quote unquote leaders or these people who are at the top of their game or top of their field. We covet them and we allow God. I'm sorry. You know, part of part of what's troubling me is I remember being 17, I remember being 16, I remember being young. And I remember being impressionable and being wowed by people who have who who seem to have gotten the answers. You know, when you grow up in a depressed area like many of us black black people grow up in like many of us black girls you know it's like the people who got out the people who made it out they're like this mystifying mystique that's part of the reason that I'm dedicating 2019 to nonprofit and to talk to young girls so that they can have a visual example of someone who made it out you know You know, I just, there's so many thoughts flowing through my mind and I don't want to begin to weep in this video, but I'm, I'm sad and there's a part of me that feels broken for so many different reasons for, for all of the, the young girls out there and young boys, all of the young people out there who are looking up to adults for the way, for the guidance, and being fed upon, preyed upon. And it's just sad, you know. <clears throat> I've seen, like before I knew what was going on, I saw a lot of different things now about R. Kelly coming up on my news feed, and it's pretty split. Oh, these girls knew what they wanted, all oh, this, that, and the other. We failed these girls. <clears throat> We failed them because there were so many people. There was like a machine. So many people who were complicit in continuing for the, his predatory behavior to perpetuate. And one lady in there said, we knew that it was happening, but people didn't care because they were young black girls. And, you know, we don't really care about black girls. And I, I'm... But also in the series, it talked about the whole music industry and this coveting of young girls and how Elvis Presley was with Priscilla when she was a teenager and um, and uh, there are other names of white artists that they mention who had these really young girls, and, and including one guy who married his 13-year-old cousin. And, you know, it's like, it's a twofold issue. It's a twofold issue because it's like, we can't address one side of it without addressing the other side, without addressing the, the side that 
teaches boys that the most prized thing that a girl has is her youth, her beauty, and her naivete. Now, some of you may not feel like naivete is one of the one of the, the prizes or the prized possessions of a, of a younger girl. However, according to evolutionary psychologists, it is because when a, when a male is not looking for a woman to, to settle down with, who's going to be the mother of his children or long-term, when he's just looking to copulate, to fornicate, however you want to put it, when he's just looking to have sex, he needs a person who is pliable and I would say this, right? There's an adverse relationship that a, that a man has with a woman's level of intelligence and his, and his ability to, to quickly mate with her. I'll just say that, I'll quickly have sex with her. So the more ignorant she is, the more underinformed, the more naive she is, the more attractive she is because she's not gonna cause too much of a problem. You know, we can't talk about we can't talk about the way that young girls are acculturated without ta also talking about the way that males in this in our societies are acculturated as well so that the girls feel that they're I'm sorry this is so the girls have this how do you put this have this desire to be pliable and pleasing like some of like one of the girls was like um she didn't want to tell him no because she she didn't want him to be mad at her part of me is thinking about how we are raising our children to respect adults and to listen to adults and to obey adults obey elders instead of teaching our children to question even us to, to use philosophy and pontificate and use their minds to see whether or not something makes sense. It's like we don't, we're not socializing our children to, to think outside of the box and to think outside of our command that so many of us want our children to just be obedient. And then we lead them, then we send them out into the world, not really fully equipped to be able to think and navigate on their own. And R. Kelly had a brother in jail who was talking about it's just a preference that he likes young girl. What's the what's the I like older women. What's what's the what's the big deal? You know, when a when a girl is first of all, when a girl is not of legal age to be able to consent, there's a problem. And also, like there was one part where they were talking about him and Aaliyah were like peas in a pod, and how she just made him laugh so much. And you have to think about the the mentality of a man who is there in relationship with a 12, 13 year old girl where she has the key to his sense of humor so that she's making him laugh and there, oh God, and it, it, the, just the, the people who were complicit, the people who, uh, who allowed or, or the, the grown, the, the part that angers me are the grown people. Like people are like, oh, these girls knew what they wanted. No, I'm sorry, 17 is still a child. Some of you act like you don't have children in your family, like you've not raised children. 17, your mind is not, your, your mind doesn't become fully developed until you're 25, so they say. But I still remember at 25, I didn't quite feel like an adult. But all of the adults who knew better, who were picking up young girls for him, bringing young girls back, and who looked, one of the things that angered me, just made my skin crawl about this series, were the people, including that older woman, Miss McLean, who was laughing. Oh, he was so aggressive. He was talking about sexual things. Really? Still smirking about it to this day. And one of the producers smirking about how, it, like, if you look at it, if you go back and you look at the very first time that the guy was talking about how he was, how R. Kelly was down there scavenging by the, by the, by the high school to pick up girls, he smirks as the camera is going down on him. And I'm like, as the, as it's fading down, cause saying going down in this context of this, I just, you know what? There's just so much. <clears throat> okay. So R. Kelly was molested by a family member. He dropped out of school senior year. He's really talented. And so that's one of the things, you know, it's like we confuse a person's good talent 
for them being a good person. Look how many people were defending Bill Cosby because he was America's dad, because he played a character on TV. A lot of what they were talking about in this series is hiding in plain sight. And so it's like, we allow people to be these predators because they have money, power, influence, because they do something good and, and, and contribute. Listen, Bill Cosby and A Different World and The Cosby Show, those were the reasons that I went to an HBCU. I went to Clark Atlanta University because of A Different World. And I'm glad that I did. And I have to see it for what it is that it is. So Bill Cosby did a good thing, you know, for the public presenting this air and this image, you know, of, of black aristocracy or bourgeois, the black elite, whatever you want to call it. However, who it is and what it is that he did doesn't give him, it doesn't give him free reign to run roughshod in his personal life, hurting people. And we, and we allow him to with reckless abandon simply because he played a nice dad on TV. I presented the question years ago. And for those of you who are going to come for me about the Bill Cosby, listen, Bill Cosby admitted in a deposition that he got Quaaludes to have intercourse with girls who, of whom he did not get consent for beforehand to have intercourse with them. There's this thing called ongoing consent. Just because a person can listen, and some people are like, oh, well, they he they went to his room. And I don't want to talk about Bill Cosby too much in this video, but they're like, oh, he went. So, okay, so a person can go to a room wanting to have sex. A person can even go into the act having sex. But if it doesn't feel right, they can stop at any time. If the vibe ain't right, I could go up to, look, I could go up to someone's hotel room at 2.30 in the morning. I could full well want to have intercourse. I could even allow them to go down on me. But if I'm like, you know what? The, 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 the mustache is prickling me. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. He smell funny, whatever. I could just, I could change my mind at any moment. I could get two or three strokes and still change my mind. Anybody can. Ongoing consent, and because a person consents to oral doesn't mean they consent to penetration. Because a person consents to vaginal doesn't mean they consent to anal. And you know, so it's like we have this disconnect that exists in our society where, for some reason, men are acting like they, they just don't get it. Like they don't get ongoing consent. Like they don't get, you know, what's the matter with having intercourse with a, a young, a young, a, there's no doubt about it that 13, 14 is too young. But I think the gray area comes when the person, when the young lady has begun to go through puberty. Because way back in the, in, in cause like our DNA is still old, right? So our DNA still calls for, you know, um, early copulation. So we're, so we're very attracted to young bursting femininity. However, at some point we have to start diving into into our in, in, into our acculturation for what's right now we're not only living till 30 years old anymore we're living a lot longer there are a lot more things that are available for us now where we can tell that a 17 year old mind is not sophisticated enough to really be able to navigate and there are some people who like that? They're like, well, she doesn't know. This is it's better for me. Less, 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 less friction. <sighs> so his tour manager f had documents forged for Leah to show that she was 18 when the girl was really 15. It's like I'm talking about all of these people who were complicit in this. People who went to his, stu producers who went to his studio and saw beds all around, young girls who saw him assault a teenager in front of them and really didn't know what to do. And it just, it makes me think about myself as a teenager. It makes me think about myself as a young woman and the, and the, what do you call that? I can't think of the word, but when you have the ability to be among the gatekeepers, the people who have figured out how to transcend out of poverty, there's an excitement, there's a bustling that exists in that world. 
You know, I've had a chance to traverse and to travel and to, and I've been in studios with people who produce music and it's a magical time because we live in a capitalistic society and people who are able to afford all of these wonderful and amazing things, foods that you couldn't afford to eat, cars that you couldn't afford to ride in yourself. And it's, it's, it's magical and it's just, it's, it's wonderful when you covet that and you want that for yourself, but that doesn't mean that you should be abused in, 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 because you desire a better life. And you know what? And it's like, okay, speaking of abuse, I understand the man was abused as a child, but at some point we have to get help for what's going on inside of us so that we're not harming other people. We're talking about the pilfering and the pillaging, the destruction of youth and innocence. And it's like, okay, at some point we have to be like, you know, I know that this happened to me in my past. However, I'm going to break the cycle. I don't have to perpetuate this. Oh God. They talked about so many good things in here. Oh, this is what I want to end the video on. When I lived in Georgia, I had the opportunity to go into the prison system and mentor young girls. And the thing that stood out most to me, and you know what, this is part of the reason that I'm so liberal and I'm so, my heart is so wide and forgiving for people who are caught up in prostitution and things of those nature, things of that nature. I had the opportunity to, to go and mentor girls who were in prison. And the, one of the things that, that stands out above other things to me is that these girls who were lured into prostitution, they weren't lured into prostitution with, oh, I'm going to have you work on this corner. You're going to make me this money. No, they were lured into it by thinking that they were in a relationship with this person. This is my boyfriend. They really, truly believe that this is their boyfriend. And I remember being a young girl and being empowered by older men. You know, there's something about not not getting that validation and, and wanting to, to step out on your own. And there's something about the, 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 the acknowledgement and the, I don't want to say co-signing, not co-signing, but there's some word that I would love to say right now, but there's something of the validation, the validation of an older person. Cause you know, we, we, we treat adulthood like there's this mystique, like, oh, we're in a different class here. You got to go to bed at this time. You can't watch this because we can't have this conversation. Adults are talking and, <clears throat> and we act like there's this mystique about adulthood that makes children want to pe peer through the, the veil to be able to get there. And there's something I remember, you know, a girl's being being lured by these guys with this whole, oh, this is a relationship because you're so mature. You're so this, you're so that. And one of the young ladies... Um, inside of this footage, she was talking about how she really thought that R. Kelly was her boyfriend. She just thought that, you know, Aaliyah was uh, an isolated incident and then, then there's her and she thought that this was her boyfriend. And so that's one of the things that, that really just kind of stood out to me because I remember in mentoring the young incarcerated girls that they were in situations where their boyfriend, it, it, like, so these boys empower these girls. Oh, you, you're so adult, like you're so grown. Come with me and, and, and live with me. Then all of a sudden we got financial problems, but you know what, honey, there's a way that you can help us make money, but it doesn't start out with, oh, you know, you go out there and do that. They get groomed into it so that it first starts out as a threesome with another guy or girl. And then, well, you did it with him. Why can't you do it with this guy? It's the same type of thing, except now we'll be making money. And they get lured into this because they're not fully ripened yet. They're not fully matured. And I can't end this video without talking about the complicitness of the mothers in this as well. You know, we talk about, we talk about, you know, there's this honor in, in, in prostituting our daughters for marriage. Oh, I'll, I'll give you my daughter in exchange for marriage. There's an honor in that because the Bible says so, says so. But there are many of us who prostitute our daughters for fame, for acknowledgement, for a little bit of money here, for being able to ride in limos, for... God. 
we're at 20 minutes now i'm gonna get out of this video i want to hear your thoughts below tanya tko go out there and love one another most importantly love yourself peace